The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's class. Uh, my name's Trevor Conkergood, and I'm so excited to be able to be with you today and present this special class. Maybe I'll just smile and wave to you guys. Um, I don't expect to need my webcam too much today, but I thought I'd say hi. Uh, I'm super excited because today's class is going to be a quick start class. Oh, lost my camera. There we are. Why is it not coming to the front? There we go. <clears throat> Today's class is going to be a very special quick start class for all people that own the Floriani FTCU software. And so uh, good afternoon. Welcome to all the people that are attending today's class live. Thank you so very much for attending. As always, there's a questions box as part of the kind of live class control panel that you can use to, come to chat with me. And so I can see some people are saying hi in there. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Lucinda. Uh, thanks very much for using that. So um, I'll check the questions box a few times throughout today's class. Um, however, the topics for today's class are already set and I'm excited and I want to get started. I want to get right to it because it's our quick start class. And so um, I have lots of great things for people that are brand new. Um, so I'm going to put away my questions box for now and I'll check in on you guys again in a little while. And if for all the people that are watching today's class and it's recording, I just want to say hi, welcome to my home here in sunny Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. My name's Trevor and I'm actually the software manager for RNK Distributing. And it's certainly my pleasure and my honor to, um, to be able to share this class with you guys. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to put my camera away um, and move on with my slides. And so, yeah, my name's Trevor. Um, today's class is for the people that are members of my FTCU workshop number one. Um, however, um, I intend for this class to be the best first class for people that are just brand new with FTCU software. And so my intention is actually to share this class on like YouTube or on my website so that you guys can share it with your friends. And generally speaking, if anybody's asking, you know, where should I start when I get the software? These classes are going to be some of the best classes to refer people to. So today's goal is to be kind of like a first, a quick start. I call it Quick Start 2.0 because, of course, I recorded my first Quick Start Guide for the Floriani software back in February 2015. And so I thought I would kind of go through and add some new recordings and so what I'm talking about is the people who are members of my FTCU workshop. I have actually made four different workshops for the people who own the Floriani classes. And that's really where I started many, many years before I was ever the software manager for RNK. I was simply just Trevor um, who came from Saskatoon and wanted to do some teaching with the Floriani software. And we made workshop one. And I know many, many, many people have that workshop one. And if you don't know, um, today's class is part Part of it and I continue to add new classes to all of my workshops. After we finished workshop one, um, I did workshop two and then workshop three. And after workshop three, I did a workshop just for people that had the Fusion software, which is um, ba basically FTCU is the main kind of like I like to call the Cadillac of embroidery. And Fusion is an entry level of the embroidery software that Floriani makes. And so I did a work. What I said was anybody who owned my workshop one, two and three, I would send them the copies of the Fusion workshop for free because I know that some people just really love to collect all of my classes. But that said, if you've got FTCU software, I suggest you start with workshop number one. And the only reason to ever go and buy workshop two or workshop three would be because you absolutely loved what you did in workshop one and you can't wait to do more. Anyway, they're all available for purchase from your local Floriani dealer, and they're currently on sale for about $99 each, you guys. So if you buy workshop one, you would get all of my recordings. And basically, this is if you had them all. There's 61 classes that I've recorded. Each one is around two hours long. It's over 127 hours of classes. You don't have to go through all that. Today's class should be enough. But that said, um, these are the classes of Workshop 1. And all the members who join Workshop 1 will download and save these to their own computer so that you can watch them on your own time. They come with designs and artwork and all kinds of great stuff. This is everything in Workshop 1. Um, this is the PDF copy of the whole book, right? There's It's a 90 
currently it's this is a growing book right my binder gets bigger every time i make a new class but after today's class it'll be more than 94 pages long and this is you download all of these pdf pages and this is how you know what's in each class and you can review just one specific class topic if you want to or you can just watch the classes kind of from the beginning to the end um so i hope you enjoy today's class um, but these are the previous classes of FTCU workshop number one. This is actually the PDF book. Like I said, it's 93 pages. I won't make you look at them all. Um, but if you are a member, you should have downloaded all of these classes. And if you haven't, you may not understand that the DVD that you get when you join as a member and you purchase your new member DVD, that gives you the first five hours of what is more than 40 hours of video that you should receive. And all of these classes were recorded live and have been made available to all members to download. And if you haven't downloaded them yet, you simply need to contact me and I can help you with downloading them. Um, so the best email address to contact me with is actually not on the screen anymore. Well, that's silly. I think I lost a slide. There was supposed to be one that says Trevor at sunsetstitches.com. I'll type it out for you guys later. But the idea is um, on my website, you register as a member. So inside of the DVD case, there's like a little redemption code. And you put that in on my website, the sunsetstitches.com website. Just go to the Floriani workshop number one and register. And then I'll receive that information and then I'll get in touch with you and send you all of the past classes. And you'll be on my member list to hear about new ones. And I'll tell you what's happened. A lot of people joined this a long time ago when I first started. And when I've added new classes, sometimes their email starts to bounce. And so if that's you and you've joined a long time ago and you don't feel like you've gotten all these classes, just send me an email and we can get up to date. And if you've never registered your workshop and you only had the DVD and you didn't know about all those classes, just register with me now and it's never too late to catch up and have fun with us. These are the classes for workshop two. And so people that purchased workshop two should have downloaded these classes. And like I said, I did a workshop three and then we did a fusion workshop. And so this year I'm adding new classes to all of the workshops. And that's kind of what today's class is about. In fact, last week I did a really cool class for my you know, workshop number one, class number 14. Um, this slide just wants me to remind you that I also have my embroidery club and there's season one and season two and season one is complete. If you join season one, you'll download everything, you know, right away. If you join season two, we're currently in the process of releasing it kind of as we go. And so people that join today, as of today, we're at download number five with number six coming out any day now. Yeah, and there's 12 in total. It works out to be around 420 designs that were in workshop number one or in embroidery club number one. Anyway, if you have any questions, just visit sunsetstitches.com. You can learn more. So in our last class, we did the mesh fill mylar sort of, you know, flower design. And there was a purpose for it because I was revisiting a previous class. You see, back in when I first started the workshop, we did a flower challenge. And what I did was I took one of the designs from the old flower challenge and I revisited it with new tools and the latest version of the Floriani software and turned it into a lace design and um, introduced it as a new design challenge. And so all the members of FTCU workshop are invited to participate in the design challenge. Um, the challenge review class is coming up May 18th. And so the people who are members of FTCU workshop, this is the kind of fun that we're having. We're doing a re, I call it the five flower challenge 2.0 because it's a reboot of the original flower challenge and a second chance to kind of get at it and have fun with the classes. So yeah, anyway, you guys, this is where we're gonna start with today's class. And so sorry for making you listen to all that part about kind of the history of my workshop. And if you're at all interested in me and my history and how the heck I became the software manager for RNK, this prairie boy who lives up here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, if you wanna stick around after class today, I'll be happy to share with you my story about kind of how I became involved. But in the meantime, I wanna get right to learning about how to use the Floriani software 
So let's go ahead and get started. And the first topic is really just let's review the FTCU workspace. And so if I pop up my Floriani software, um, notice right away that mine probably looks different than yours. If I click under toolbars, the, see how there's drop down menus? And the drop down menus have things that you don't do every day, you know, the, the, the less more seldomly used things. But if I click under toolbars and I scroll down to here where it says, uh, for example, reset workspace. OK, so I'm also able to save workspaces and I have some saved ones. But if I say reset workspace, it will put the tools back to their kind of like default locations before anybody moved anything and messed it all up. These were the default locations and you're allowed to take your toolbars and move them, um, bring them down off the program, bring them and put them into other locations, make them like a, a new toolbar space. So let's see if I can add one over to the right here. There you go. And then you can put, um, you know, as, have as many toolbars as you want and wherever you want, you can even open them and close them. So if you drag a cool toolbar off the workspace and then close it, you might wonder, what happened to those tools that I used to have? Well, you would look under toolbars to see which toolbars are currently turned on and off. And so it looks like I turned off, for example, the quilt builder tools. And so I click here and that turns them back on again. And anyway, if you mess your toolbars up and you just want everything back to normal, click under workspace and reset workspace. In fact, that's something that often gets recommended. Um, if you ever, you're ever using the software and then you're like, what happened to my color palette or what happened to my slow redraw? If anything gets confused, just use that tool, toolbars and reset workspace. And so, yeah, it's a customizable workspace. I quite often make my own favorite workspaces. And so this is my um, new favorite workspace. See, and it puts my tools where I like them and you're allowed to do that. So, okay. Um, looking around the workspace at the, the, you know, the one thing to kind of bear in mind is that as the software manager for RNK, I actually have all of our software kind of put together. And so really um, what you're looking at is not just FTCU or, you know, Total Quilter or Sketch a Stitch. There are a few different programs that Floriani makes. And if you own more than one, the tools kind of blend together. And so um, I'll talk more about that later, but just understand that currently what you're looking at is kind of all the tools that are currently available in the program. And as you know, as a Floriani software owner, we update the software. You know, I want to say two or three times a year. And every time we do, we add new stuff. And so your workspace is always kind of growing and changing. Um, you know, that said, all of the past recordings that I've ever made for the club are still valuable because we don't take the tools away. We simply add new ones. And normally what I'm teaching about anyways is about sort of theory, like, you know, stitch length and density and underlay and the kind of real things you need to learn about to make a good embroidery design. Those are the things that I like to talk about in my classes. And so that's why I say even the classes that I recorded, you know, a year, two years ago, three years ago, they're absolutely interesting still today because the topics of the class have never changed. Those things like what underlay do you need to choose and why didn't change. You may have had, you know, new lace tools added to the software and we learn about them as we go through my classes. So, so today when we look at the workspace, you're looking at everything. That's the main point. And the first place I thought I would start was kind of like the right hand side where you see um, there's like a little tab here that says browser and library and designs. So basically you use the browser tab to point at a folder on your computer and then you point over designs to see the contents of that. And if you click over the browser tab, or sorry, the library tab, you're looking at some specific places of your computer. So browsers gives you the ability to look in any folder location that you want, whereas library takes you specifically to the Floriani library. This is where you might find things like the free monthly designs. Um, you can add your own folders under this library. So for example, a, a Trevor's favorite class designs, those are the ones that I teach with the most. And so I kind of make them ready to go. If I click on um, Trevor's class designs, then those will be the designs that I'll see. If I click on my browser and I click under, you know, a folder there, then those will be the designs that I'll see. Oh, I have to click on a folder there to make it 
sort of recognize that I've looked at a different folder. So you um, can browse through your computer in a more visual way because the software, when you use the yellow tabs on the side, it's giving you these beautiful icons for all your embroidery designs or even artwork. If you look at a folder that has images, JPEGs, they'll all be available kind of for viewing. So when I click under the free monthly designs, these are the ones aren't, they aren't really free. They're exclusive to members. They're to, to people that own the software. If you click under December, these are all the years of December. If you click under December, 2020, then these are the designs that were from December, 2020. And notice there's a JPEG. That's actually a photograph of the stitch out. And then the little design itself, you know, there's a Nomi design and a Christmas tree, tree sketch and happy holidays, you know, that kind of stuff, a freestanding lace, uh, you know, snowflake. So those are designs that came with the software and you get them by visiting the software club, the r &K software club. And so um, you'll want to know about the software club because the software club is where you're going to download your free designs. It's where you're going to get your updates. It's where you're going to do a lot of your learning. Um, some of the sort of best videos to watch are in the software club. So when I visit, if I go on my web browser, and I visit our website, rnksoftware.club. This is for people who own the Floriani software and you sign in to see the exclusive content, right? Once you're signed in, and this is only if you own FTCU. So what I'm telling you is the monthly freebies are only available if you own the kind of Cadillac of embroidery program, FTCU. But if you do, you click under free monthly designs and this is where you go to get, That's this is where those designs came from, right? This is the most recent designs I'm recording today. It's April 29th, 2021. And these are the April designs. May's designs will be coming out in just a few days from now. There's March, there's February, there's January. If you're a brand new person, you click on download all designs. Or if you're like I used to be and you kind of forget to do it all the time, you can just click on that and it'll catch you up, get you all the designs right from the beginning, right up to date. If you're not sure how to do it all, just click this and watch a little video to show you how to download them and unzip them basically is what you have to do and the software knows right where to put them so that when you go into Floriani you can just show up on the left and start browsing through and so that's really the idea about the software um, club is that you can get designs from there there's also um, just to touch on a few things the learning center so there's amazing training videos these are videos that are very tool specific right when you go through and you look at for example um, if you have any of the Floriani programs, there's going to be a section of videos on how to use them. You know, one of the latest programs was Floriani Rainbow. And the deal was if you bought a box of thread, it came for free. Maybe in the future, it'll be some program that will sell or some other way, but it was a special function of the program that you, it could be your very first Floriani software you ever got. You know, that said, if you bought the box of thread, the Floriani Rainbow software got added to it. And these are all training videos that'll show you something about how to use the Floriani Rainbow software. And so that's kind of the cool thing about it um, is that there's lots and lots of great sort of tool-based videos. Let's just pause that. I can't listen to my own self-talk. Um, anyway, you guys, so let's, um, the other thing I want to point out here is where you get your updates, right? So FTCU software, like I said, Rainbow software, uh, Lettering Master, Sketch a Stitch, Total Quilter, all of these programs can be downloaded, but essentially the Floriani package is all one download, right? So if you click on FTCU, yeah, it's going to show you, you know, the latest videos on what's new in the Floriani software. Uh, the latest version was released February 2021. I can tell you that um, there will be an update coming out um, in the spring. So not too far. We're not too far away from our next update of the Floriani software. And when it comes out, this is where you go to download it. You can come here. I'll have all new videos to watch on the latest features of the program. And then you'll click here to download the latest version. And when you do download it, um, what you'll find out is it's all one download. No matter what you own, it'll all be on the download. So. F is for FTCU, Q is for Total Quilter, Sketch a Stitch, Lettering Master, Rainbow, and even Creative Express, which is kind of like the free software. If you don't own any Floriani software at all and you just found this video, go ahead and download it. 
just click here to download it. You'll be in downloading all of these programs and installing them all with one download. And if you've never purchased any of them, it's called Creative Express. And with Creative Express, you can use our thread converter to you know to do you can open and save embroidery designs you can change their size um but if you buy any of the programs and of course ftcu is kind of the main one that we you know when people say i own floriani software they mean ftcu and that's the cadillac of embroidery guys it's beautiful it comes with free updates for life um anyway click here to start your download um, if I click back just to kind of not to go on too much about this, but update history. So um, just since the year 2014, this is all of the different versions or updates. This is how many times we updated the software. And there's a whole video library just to go over all the different updates for every build of the software. And so that's a great way to kind of learn what's new every time, you know, every couple times a year we update it, people download it and update watch those videos. So anyways, you guys, that's important stuff to know about. I guess the last thing while we're on the club, if you're looking for support, you click here. Um, you can create a support ticket. We are um, really awesome for responding to support questions. Um, uh, currently, it's Matthew, who's the manager of our support desk, and he's really helpful. He tries really hard to get back to people quickly, and he's very knowledgeable. And if he needs help, he knows how to, he always contacts me, and I work with Matthew, and sometimes I have to work with the customers. And so we really are proud of our customer support at RNK, you guys. Anyway, all that said, that's how you do all that. And um, so let's kind of, all right, let's come back to the software and kind of really get dig into it now um but before i do i forgot this part i just wanted to make sure you understood that one quick thing before we get right into it and that is no matter what one you own right so this is ftcu with the phoenix on the cover fusion that's an entry-level embroidery software if you own fusion you own half of ftcu if you own FTCU, you already own everything there is in Fusion. Fusion is something that is often bundled for a new machine owner. It's a great first program to start with. It has all the core tools that you know you need to create beautiful embroidery. Um, and then if you want to, you can upgrade to FTCU later. There's an upgrade for it. Um, but if you already own FTCU, then you already own all of Fusion. And then there's the other programs like Total Quelter or Sketch a Stitch or Rainbow or Lettering Master. And what I'm telling you is if you own more than one, if you own FTCU and Total Quilter, they unlock together. And, the, and, and same thing with Sketch a Stitch unlocks together. You can start with Sketch a Stitch, right? And then unlock FTCU later. If you don't own any of them, it's called Creative Express. And it's free, but if you what and then when you're in your software, you go under your help menu and you go to your license activator, and that's where you can choose to unlock whatever you buy, right? So if you go into your favorite Floriani dealer and you're like, I've been playing with that FTCU and I'm here to buy it, they'll be like, That's awesome. How'd you learn about it? Just tell them that Trevor taught you all about it and you've been watching the videos in the club and you can't wait to buy, you know. And so you then now you click on FTCU and you put in your activation code and that will turn on the features of FTCU. But if you don't own FTCU now, you can try it is what I'm telling you. So when you buy it, you activate it and you can and that all the programs, Sketch a Stitch, Total Quilter can be activated together and whatever you activate will turn on. Um, the great news is if you own more than one program, you can update them all with one, just with one download, you keep everything up to date, all your Floriani software. And um, so if you don't, if maybe you own FTCU and you'd like to try Total Quilter, you can click under help and click on demo mode. See that demo mode. And when you go into demo mode, you can choose which program you want to try. So the first one is Fusion and the second one is the Fusion Upgrade. So in other words, the first two clicks equals FTCU. There's also Sketch a Stitch, Lettering Master, Rainbow and Total Quilter. And if you leave them all checked off, you're basically trying all the tools at one time, kind of like mine. If you were like, I'm thinking about buying Sketch a Stitch and I don't own anything, you can uncheck everything but Sketch a Stitch. And that way you'll know exactly what you would get if you went to the store and spent that money. Um, so that's kind of how it works, you guys. You can use the only thing you cannot do when you're using demo mode is save your work. So you can open up designs, you can resize them, edit them, make new things, digitize, auto digitize, try every tool in the program. 
um, but you won't be able to save what you did unless you pay for it is basically the deal. So yeah, okay. Um, so that's the great news. And so um, I'm glad you let me kind of share that with you guys because I think that's valuable knowledge for a brand new owner uh, to the Floriani group. And so I thought I would start with the thread converter as my first demo for today because it's basically um, something you could do even with the free software, right? Any Any Floriani program comes with the tool, you know, the color palette at the bottom. And so, for example, if I go uh, start a new empty workspace, just leave that snowflake over there. Notice that I can have multiple designs open at a time. And so we've started design two, but design one, that's where that little snowflake was. That's still there. And I can keep working on that snowflake, add some text, change the colors, do whatever you want. You're probably not going to make a pink snowflake, right? A lot of times people go in and recolor them to have the correct colors. And that's kind of the cool thing about having a thread converter is notice how I've got all of the Floriani colors down here. And I could make, um, and not only have I got all of the Floriani colors, if I click right here, you can select what thread chart you want to use. So if you don't have all the Floriani colors, then you might want to buy them all. But if you don't, if you happen to have a whole bunch of some other thread colors, you can use those thread palettes in your software too. And that's kind of the cool thing. In fact, if you open up a design, it doesn't always come in Floriani colors, does it? You know, maybe your design, you downloaded it and had some other colors. So for example, if I go to my browser and look at these designs on my um, workspace or on my desktop here, um, I know that when I open up this bird, this folk art bird design, that the colors are not in Floriani, they're in the Jenny Haskins color palette. And so the software is opening up the design and notice over on the right in the sewing sequence area where it says the colored names. And I can see the first color is like Jenny Haskins number 99 red or something like that. And I could basically click on that color to select it. And then the software will find the closest match in the Floriani palette below or whatever palette you want. So when you click on yellow, it'll find you the closest match in the yellow, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you can find closest match colors that way in whatever brand you use. Um, but if you just want the whole design like converted to be another color palette, there's a button right here. You click on that one, it does match to palette and basically it'll choose whatever thread colors you want. I'll say Floriani Poly and it'll closest match all the Jenny Haskins colors to Floriani Poly colors. And so that's a cool thing to me, um, the ability to do, you know, what I call th thread converting. And then probably the next thing you're going to want to do if you're brand new and you're just getting ready to sew a design. I always like to learn how they stitch out before I take them to the machine, uh, because when the machine stops and says the next color is red, I want to know red for what? Is it the red for the swirl? Is it the red in the bird? Is it Santa's hat? Is it Santa's chimney? What is it? Right. And that's so you've got a sewing simulator up at the top. Notice the little color bar here and you can just click play and it will start to sew. You can turn on your three dimensional preview of it. You can even put a hoop on your screen if you want to see how big it is. So maybe I want to tell it, tell the software what um, machine format I use. So if you tell it that you use PES format, then it will give you all the hoop sizes available for the machines that use the PES format. And so you can be sure that your design is going to fit, you know, in your embroidery hoop. And then you can click the sewing simulator and watch it sew out. You can zoom in on it if you want to see it, you know, nice and close. You can speed it up, make it go a little faster, and you can uh, slow it up down. You can also pause it and click here to go one little stitch at a time. And if you want, you can grab this little blue sort of stitch locator and make it so as fast as you want to, and just basically scrub through the whole design to learn how it stitches out. Um, there's a little stitch count marker here. So if you want to travel to an exact stitch count in your design, every time I sew it, I have a thread break at exactly the stitch count. You can fast forward right to that stitch count and go, what is it that's at that part of the design, you know? And then you can zoom in on it at like, you know, thousands of percent. I'm now 1,700% zoomed in to see what the heck's going on in my design. And so these are things that you could do with even the Floriani Creative Express software. Put it, open a design, view it, resize it, recolor it, you know, those kinds of things. Um, so, sorry, I'm looking at my notes about where I'm going next because, um, 
One of the things that I think we often want to do is kind of understand the sewing sequence. And so um, basically, if I open up, um, and if you're wondering why I do this, it, it's because I like to put chapter markers in my classes so that when I change topics, I know, and it helps me when I'm making my printable class notes to know at what time in the class I changed my topic kind of thing. So, so basically, sewing sequence is over here, right? You can see... Um, you can use this to select a whole color of the design. Um, if you so, let's go ahead and click on a new empty workspace and browse through my library where I've got some of my favorite class designs that I teach with, and I can just come over here and um, sort of like click and drag to bring a design onto my screen. So whatever design you bring onto your screen. Um, you'll be able to immediately learn sort of things about it, like, for example, the sewing sequence. And so right now you can see that it sews with the light green and then a dark green and then a light yellow and a medium yellow and an orange color. And so there's, you know, a sewing sequence that's over here and you could change them. If you're like, I need something to sew before something else there's little buttons down at the bottom here. You can change your sewing sequence. So for example, um, let's just think of a quick example here. So if I select on this design and then I want to put some kind of a, I don't know, uh, a background behind it. So maybe I use my tool to create an outline around it. And I just let the software create not only like a little design outline around everything. So did you notice what it did? I'll just zoom in. See the little green outline that it put? Right. So now we've got an outline that goes around our design. And so it'll be the last thing in your design. Because when you create things with the tools of your software, that was the create outlines tool that I just used. So essentially, I selected the embroidery design and then clicked on the create outlines tool and the software made a new shape. A piece of artwork really is what it is. It doesn't have any embroidery in it yet. And so um, the kind of the point here is, what if you wanted to put um, an embroidery fill background behind your design? So you choose a standard fill stitch for that and it fills that shape in. Now, everything seems great except for there's one glaringly obvious problem, which is the sewing sequence, because the thing that we added came in at the end when we really kind of wanted it to be at the beginning, right? So notice the ability to select that color or that shape and then use the tools. Now, if I move it up by one, it'll go one color at a time. So in between the second last and the last color, if I click on this one, it'll move it directly to the beginning. So you have up one color, down one color, and then you have beginning and end as like quick places. You can also click and drag to resequence a design or a color. So for example, if I take that color and I just click and drag, if I let go over pink, it'll go after whatever I let go of. So the one that you let go on, it goes after. So you can visually drag and drop the design. So now I've got it behind part of the design, but not all of it, right? So obviously something like that was meant to sew first. And so that's the concept is that you can resequence your embroidery designs. Um, notice when I turn on the three-dimensional preview, it gives more of a realistic look. And this is essentially an on and off situation. So um, a lot of the things over on the left in this blue toolbar right here, it starts with the 3D view on and off. It's got a um, import artwork and an import backdrop tool for people that want to create embroidery sort of from images. It's got a grid on off tool. It's got a cutting mat on off tool. Um, this one here is for embroidery. Now the cutting mat, you know, I'm just trying to recall. I don't think the cutting mat's there unless you get total quilter. Maybe I can't remember on that anymore. If I if I didn't have everything activated, I could be certain, but sometimes I'm not sure on that one because the, the cutting mat was a lately. Yeah. Anyway, if you don't have the cutting mat and you're wondering why, it might be because it came when I added on Total Quilter. It could be a tool that... Anyway, now I'm just sort of distracting you guys. This one's the show your embroidery hoop on and off kind of thing. This is the select an embroidery hoop tool. So now, I, like I said before, choose um, your format, choose the hoop size. You can rotate the hoop in here. You can also create your own new custom hoop sizes. If you've bought some new hoops that aren't in the software, you can add them. 
Um, yeah, if there was a backdrop on screen, this would be like a view on off button for it. Um, this is to show and hide your stitches. And um, if I zoom in on them and turn off 3D, notice the show needle points. Let's zoom in really close. See, show needle points on and off. So most of this blue toolbar is what I would call um, sort of like view on off tools, you know, show your hoop, show your stitches, show your needle points on off, show your backdrop on off, that kind of thing. 3D view on off. Um, backdrop, this is your background color. So you can go in and change to have a, any colored background you want. It doesn't have to be white. It could be gray or pink or whatever you want. Um, you can also put a fabric background behind your, your embroidery. So if you want to see what it's going to look like on some custom piece of fabric, you can choose like a fabric background and have that be kind of the behind your embroidery design. And so that's really kind of how it works, you guys. And, and this is the basic, the beginnings of it, right? Opening them embroidery designs, recoloring them. Um, and then probably the next thing you want to do is going to be like print it off, right? Do like a printed, you know, design sheet, you know? Um, so I thought we'd talk a little bit about doing, adding notes to your designs and doing printable information pages. And so the idea here is um, when you've made up some embroidery and you're ready to, uh, to take it to the machine, my hoop on there. Uh, maybe you want to do a layout, you know, maybe you want to do a whole thing of it, right? Or maybe it's just this one design and that doesn't matter. But if you want to have something to follow and, you know, I'm an old school guy. When I learned to do embroidery, we didn't even have computers with monitors. And so everything was done by a printable. We used all, our embroidery designs were all on little paper tapes. Here's my paper tape. Literally, this is an embroidery design from the 1980s when I very first learned to do embroidery. And there was so there was no modern. You had to have a printed run sheet. That was like one of the most important things. And so when you go into the software and you go print preview right here. This it'll bring you to the a preview screen and you're in control of what gets printed. Like I currently have it right now set up to do um, over multiple pages. So if I go to settings. Um, I've got the color analysis included. Um, I've got it set to print at actual size. I've got it set to show both artwork and stitches. There's not actually any artwork in the design, but if you know you can show and hide stitches or artwork uh, in your printed previews, you might want to include something like a crosshair that would uh, print like a big X over top of the center of your page. So I'll add the crosshair so you can see what I'm talking about. So basically you control the settings of what gets printed. Notice where it says print design notes. Um, so what that's all about, I'm just gonna close this print preview and show you right here. See, it says design notes and design information. So this little box right here, and some of you might be saying, in my computer, Trevor, those are like stacked over top of each other. Yeah, remember I used, I changed my workspace earlier. Remember toolbars, workspace, reset workspace. Normally it looks like this. And the only reason why I changed it and I made my properties box go side by side was because um, I like to have more view of my sequence view and I don't need as much workspace. A lot of times I'm happy to give up that extra real estate for the convenience of it. And so it's something I customize my workspace. It's something that I teach people how to do. If you come um, and watch the, so the classes in the RNK software club, I'll show you guys how to reset, you know, how to do all this. It's one of the videos. Um, I think it was in November, 2020, when we did that one, it was a weekly video in our software club on how to customize your workspace. And so I won't go through that today, but I can always go workspace and then reset it if I kind of want to go back to my favorite or your favorite, whatever one. So this is my new favorite workspace. And um, I like it because I did two main things. First of all, I put all my total quilter tools over here on the left. Next, I moved the properties box beside the sequence view to make more room for the sequence view. Um, and then the other big thing I did was I made the designs tab much bigger than it comes when you start out with. Anyway, you guys, you'll learn how to customize your workspaces. Um, and if you really want to learn right now, go to the club and look under November 2020. You'll find that video. OK, so here's what I'm saying. Go to the design notes. Say this is the you know design we made for the 
purple shirts. You know, and you oh, and I've spelt everything wrong or whatever, but you know, hit enter, you know, add mylar for sparkle. You know. Or any notes you want to make to yourself. Like this is to me, this is so very valuable. This was one of the first things that I was like, what am I gonna do with my notes? When we went on screen, when 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 design digitizing changed from a big old paper draft and a digi board and making these notes, and I had file folders for every design with the notes inside. When we went to making digital embroidery designs, it was like, where am I gonna put my notes? How am I gonna know which one's which? And how do I know what to remember next time? And this is so very valuable is the notes. I love this part of the software, specifically the notes, because you can come in here and say, I've made changes to this. This is not the original. This is what I did. Um, you know, the original was plain, but when we put it on the purple shirts, I added a blue background for, um, you know, because there was purple embroidery and I didn't want the purple embroidery to hide on the purple shirt. And so I gave it a, a blue background or a green background or whatever. And that made it a new version of the design. And so, and the cool thing is if you do a printed, so then if you do keep kind of printed things as well, when you go into your print preview, whatever notes you typed into your design will get added. See them, they're right here at the bottom of the first page. And so, um, I think it's pretty cool that you can do that and um, add this kind of information. Um, there's even a little tab to find out the design information. It'll tell you how long it's going to take to stitch out, tell you how many colors it is um, based upon what speed, what size it is, that kind of stuff. Um, look up at the very top of your screen. It tells you the design name, tells you... Um, the number of stitches in the design, the number of colors, and the size. If you're noticing that it's telling me the size and metric, right? Like notice if I click on the embroidery design, it puts kind of like a box around it. And um, you know, if the background was white, this would probably show a lot easier than it will with the per pink background. So let's go back to white. But notice it says right there, 99 millimeters tall. All you have to do is right click on the ruler and change it to inches. And it'll tell you that that is basically 3.9 inches tall. And so it's almost four inches tall. Um, anyway, guys, this is kind of the basics of how it works. Um, what I thought we could do now is really dig into like how the software really works. Okay. And so the next tab or the next topic, I guess, is how it works FTCU. And this is really where we get into kind of the, um, some of the more important things, I guess. So when I go back onto the software, um, what I'm going to do is start up a new empty workspace and just get one of my very favorite things to kind of demonstrate with is a shape. And so I right here, there's a tool on the top of my toolbar that says custom shapes. And these are all uh, little libraries here, custom shape library. This one's a backdrop library. This one is an artwork library. And um, in next class, I will be talking about backdrops and artwork and how they're, what they are and how they're different from each other and all that when we, but that's not for today, okay? For today, we'll stick to just the custom shapes. And so I'm just gonna open that up. It's a little library of basic shapes um, like the apple. Some of these shapes I've added so you don't necessarily have the black cat. I, um, that black cat, something that I made and added to my custom shapes because you can easily add a custom shape. If you ever open up, if you find some artwork that you love and you wanna make it handy and you wanna add it to your custom shape library, you simply open it up and then say tools and then say save custom shape. Any piece of artwork could be put in there. If you drew, if you make your own, you know, favorite sort of little black cat and you want to add it in, just go right ahead. So that's kind of the idea. Now, um, notice when I click on said apple, I can select it. And um, first thing I'm going to do is look at its color. So it's plum colored. I don't want it to be plum. I, I want it to be a red apple. So I change the color. Notice over in the sequence that it says it's a piece of artwork. And artwork is the building block of the Floriani software. This is how the software works. So this is not an embroidery design, it's artwork. 
And artwork, what can I do with artwork? Well, first of all, I could embroider it, right? I could fill it with thread. Um, I could also cut it out with a digi cutting machine. Currently, artwork is what you use, you know, you and by the way, you can download artwork from the internet, right? Actual shapes. Um, SVG is a common artwork format that we can open. When you say open, you can open a variety of formats. So if I look on my desktop, there's like an embroidery design here. And I'm currently looking at all, all like everything that the software is able to open. But if you click here, you can choose what it will and will not open. And so, for example, I can open up artwork files like JPEGs or BMPs or SVGs or AI files. These are image files that I can open. So you can open artwork, you can save artwork. If you draw, there's a pencil right here. See the pencil? And with the pencil, I click, 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 click. And when I right click, I drew a line. You know, what is it? It's artwork. What can I do with it? I could save it to my custom shape library because I was so proud of the line I drew. I'm just kidding. But you could, right? You could save, you could file save as and save this as an SVG artwork, which you could take to a digital cutting machine and cut or use in some other graphics program or whatever you can do with artwork. So what I'm telling you is artwork, we make artwork with Floriani software. We can create artwork. We can select artwork. We can use, this is the select tool. Notice right here, the little orange tool that's highlighted. Notice that a tool, when you click on a tool, it will highlight orange. So if I click on my shape tool, notice that that is now orange and select is not. So I know what tool I'm currently using by what's colored in orange. I know that um, if I click on the shape tool, I can see the points that made my line and I can right click on top of them to add new points. So this is called shape mode. If I click on select, I'm in select mode. In select mode, I can move a shape. I can resize a shape. I can stretch a shape. So corner handles will keep proportions the same. Center handles will stretch or squish your shape. There are all sorts of little symbols around the selection box. So when I select something, notice one for delete. I'll come to undo and return it. These are undo and redo. And probably some of the first tools you'll want to learn about is undo and redo. And there's unlimited undos you can just try. And one of my favorite, I'm, I'm going to say this now because it's just come to mind. What's my, since this is our quick start guide, what's my, my biggest tip for you guys? And it is this, if you want to learn the software, I want you to commit 15 minutes a day to play with it. Do that for two weeks every day. 15 minutes. Now, those 15 minutes must not be attached to a project that you're working on. It's not, I have to get this towel ready for the party this weekend, and I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm getting frustrated, and I'm, and I'm not having any fun. These 15 minutes need to be the, I'm just going to play with my software and have a little fun today. Um, don't do it for three hours and burn yourself out. Just do it for 15 minutes, but do it every day so that you don't forget, and you click on the tools and go, oh, that's what it does delete or undo. You don't need to stitch out everything you make to learn, but doing it consistently will help you because so many people don't work on, they take a big class, they try and learn everything they need to know. Then they set it aside for weeks, sometimes months. Now they need to make a Christmas present or a birthday present and need it ready for today. And they're, you know, go to the software and then they can't remember and they start to get frustrated. And once you get frustrated, your brain starts to shut down and you're basically just not having any fun at all. And maybe you wasted all your money and just take a deep breath. Okay. And look, reach out for some help call a lifeline, you know, use one of your, get a friend to help you. But what I'm telling you is the best way to start when you have brand new is to actually click and play for a couple weeks every single day. That said, if you want to watch videos, absolutely but watching. This is meant to be a great one to start with. And then so the next one will be even better, I promise. So um, anyway, you guys, that's my little rant. Play with your play to learn. That's the best way to learn is to play with it. Um, so I'm just going through how it works. 
and the idea that you have a select tool and you can click on something to select it and you'll be able to see the size of it when it's selected. It tells me the size, the width and the height. I can work in metric or in inches just by clicking on my ruler. Um, I've got a lock tool here to lock it. This one will quickly change from select mode into shape mode. So, oh, that's sorry, I've got that wrong. That's down here is the one to switch to shape mode. That is the one to close the shape. So here, let's hit undo. See how it was an open shape. So when I drew it, I never actually closed it. If you wished that it was fully closed, like a fully closed container, you can select it. And there's an icon right here to close the shape. Same icons over here. So the icons that are around the shapes are really just duplicates of, you know, you can make a copy several ways. This is one way to copy the shape, make a second copy of it. But you can also click on copy and paste up, at, you know, up, up here to make a copy of something or the duplicate tool right here. Another way to make a copy of something, click on delete on your keyboard to delete whatever selected. Um, so this is the idea, right? If, you, if you've if you zoomed out and you've selected something, you wanna see it up and close, just click on the magnifier right beside it. It'll highlight that shape that you've selected. Um, yeah, right click icon here. This is the enter shape mode icon there. Um, this is the copy icon there. So a lot of quick links when you're in that sort of select mode. And like I said, when you're in select mode, you can relocate your shapes, resize them and stretch them. Now, when you switch to shape mode, you actually see the, see the points that make that shape. You can select those points and see their little tangents. So because this is a curved point, it has these sort of tangent lines that affect the shape and look how I can move those tangent lines closer or further away and change. So basically from this point to that point, there are two tangents that work together to fix, you know, to make that curve. Um, when you select a point like that, you can right click and tell it to be a line, which would make it not a curve, but like a more of a corner point um, or right click and tell it to smooth it out, you know, and, and or right click and tell it to make it symmetrical and symmetrical will keep both sides of the tangents equal so if you make one side bigger the other side gets bigger if you want to make one side smaller and when you turn it it turns both sides together so it keeps it symmetrical like that um, another one was cusp and so if you right click and cusp um, when you click on the little point, you can now move one independently of the other. Maybe this is way more knowledge than you need in a quick start class. So I'm not going to dwell on it, but that might have been a, something that was interesting. All of these things are things that come up again and again when you go through my workshop classes. And the one thing I want to say is this class is meant to be a little bit of a foundation builder for later. And so just a little bit of knowledge will do for today. And we'll learn more about these things and why they're important in future classes. So you have select mode and you have a uh, shape mode as two main modes of kind of selecting and working with your artwork. Um, however, if I select my embroidery and look down to the bottom, these are the styles of embroidery, right? If I click on run stitch, this is no longer artwork. See, now my sequence view says it's a run stitch and that means this is an embroidery design. We've now created an embroidery design. If I say file, save as, I could save this to PES format and stitch it out, right? It's an apple with a, a, I don't know, a bum on one side or something like that. It's a cross between an apple and a green pepper. Um, but whatever it is, if you really loved it, you could select it and save it as a brand, you know, and make it tools, save as custom shape, you know, and keep that and make that be your latest custom shape. Actually, I guess when it's an embroidery design, I can't save it as a custom shape because I've already converted it to run. If I want to see custom shapes are artwork with no stitches. So guess what? As much as this one over here is the run stitch tool, if I zip all the way over to the other side, this little gold star is the artwork tool. It's like an eraser. It says, take the thread out of the shape. So if you want to put thread in it, you click on run stitch or motif outline, and now you get a decorative outline you know, or a steel stitch outline, which makes a satin stitch column around your shape. So even the shapes that you draw, you just click on them and make them a border or a run stitch or whatever you want. If you want to fill them in, you move over here. This one's a fill stitch. So now it's like a solid shape. Um, 
The next one is a fancy fill. So now it'll take our sort of apple shape and fill it in, but that fill will have a decoration in it. And so this is why I say it's what I call artwork based embroidery. You need a shape. Without a shape, you have nothing to click to fill in. And these are the different kinds, right? And we don't even have time to go through all the different kinds and have to take a whole class just to talk about every kind of style of embroidery that you can do. But the idea is that that's a motif and you could mix any two motif patterns together to create a new and unique kind of motif pattern. You can change their size, all kinds of parameters to you know enhance them. Um, the next one's a gradient stitching. So now it kind of changes the density in a gradient profile. Now you've got a color blending tool. It'll basically take two colors and blend them together. Um, the next one is gonna do like a wavy fill. So now my background's gonna be all kind of wavy. Now you've got combination of wavy with gradient and wavy with the color blend. Um, now we've got, that's not that, that's, that's the wavy with the color blend there. I missed it. I'm clicking on the wrong one or something. Anyway, there you go. Wavy with the color blend. No, it didn't do it. Gradient. Oh, yeah, this is like totally confused now. I'll have to talk to that software manager guy <laughs> and see what's going on. Here, let's erase it and start over. There you go, that fixed it, Trevor. Um, so basically erase it was click on artwork, you know, take the thread out of it. Whatever was going wrong somehow got confused. So I just took it all out and then I put it back on. So that's two colors with wavy gradients. Uh, the next one is the mesh tool. The mesh tool is one of my favorite tools for capturing things like mylar down. You can do one layer of, of rows of stitching, open density stitching like that, or you can combine together two sort of separate layers and fancy schmancy sort of swirly patterns if you want to do it like that. Um, yeah, so it's really fun. Okay, you select a shape, come over here. Every one of these is a different style of embroidery to click on. And this is why I say it's what I call how it works you guys and so um basically if i go let's just select these two things and kind of delete them go to my library look at sort of trevor's favorite class designs and bring in an embroidery design um the bunny rabbit is simply a bunch of shapes right yes it's an embroidery design but it's an embroidery design that was made with the floriani software and i can kind of tell when i look at the colors because Look, there's the fill of the, the piece there. And it says there's a run stitch. And I guess that's like a little, I'm not sure exactly why there's a little run stitch there, but it's like a little run stitch at the end of the color. Sometimes they have little run stitches that go around them. Like notice this one here has a fill for the egg. And then it has a run stitch that goes around it. So if you were like, that's great, but I wish that it had a, a fatter border, you could change it from a run stitch to a steel stitch and then micromanage it and decide exactly how wide it was gonna be to make it fit your embroidery. And so this is why I say it's what we call object-based embroidery. And what you're really learning about when you learn to play with the software is um, how to fill in these shapes. Now, it, it, it doesn't always start with that, you know? And so I think we'll kind of try to wrap up today with opening and saving embroidery designs because that's a big part of, I think just even before you ever create anything, people want to be able to open the embroidery designs that they bought, make changes to them, and then save it again. You know, that's, I think, one of the most favorite things to do. Open up a design, come in, click select, you know, resize it, maybe make it bigger, make it smaller, put some letters around it. So now you're going to click on a, see how I've changed its size and the software is thinking right now. See, it's like thinking... And what it was doing was generating new stitches because I resized it. And so it, it's generating the stitches again and it reduced the stitch count because I made it smaller. Now I click on the text tool and I say to add some text to it and it puts down the words, my text. Well, obviously you don't want to embroider the words, my text, but it always starts with that. And then you edit the text, right? You come in this properties box and you select it and you make it say, you know, FTCU workshop. Maybe it'll look better on two lines. And so I'll click enter in between and have it be like two lines of text, click apply. And um, now it's in 
anniversary font. You could make any font you want. FTCU comes with probably 300 different letter styles. Um, in our next class, I'll talk more about text and how to use it and how to use the font play tool and how to create your own sort of font importer tool and use some of the tools, right? But the idea is today, I'll just kind of go so far as to say that Floriani has a really awesome text tool. Um, the little blue handles allow me to select and move the letters apart or to sort of where that handle is. The little gold handles allow me to select one letter independently of the other ones and put it wherever I want to sort of off of you know, the baseline so that they aren't all exactly the same like that. You can also select one letter and make it bigger or smaller than the rest of the letters um, with a corner handle kind of like this. And you can even rotate that one letter to be on a different kind of like rotation point. Um, so basically you can, you know, really have fun with your lettering. Um, notice there's also something called enveloping where you can change the actual shape of the frames of the letters. And so look forward to learning more about letters next time. But the idea is you've created your embroidery design. You probably want to put an embroidery hoop on your screen to make sure it fits. Maybe you want to select everything on your screen. Come over here. This is like an um, alignment tool. So I can align things to the left or the right or the bottom. Or, or in this case, everything's selected. Just align it to the rulers, like center it in my hoop, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, yeah. And then so now you're kind of like ready to save it, you know, and, and embroider it. And you can simply go file and save as and save this to any format you want. PES, Jeff, depends on what kind of machine you got, right? DST, EXP, XXX. Those are all machine-based formats, and you just point to tell it where you want to save it. So if you're saving it for the brother machine, you put it on a USB stick, you save it as PES format. That's the idea, right? That's how you do it. So um, at this point, I want to tell you guys a little bit of a story um, about my friends, Ricky and Kay Brooks. So Ricky and Kay Brooks were the people who started R&K Distributing. They were the ones that met Walter way back when, I don't even know what year that was, uh, over 15 years ago anyways. And um, anyway, this is a photograph of Ricky and Kay. This is um, Kay Brooks uh, getting inducted into the Sewing Machine Hall of Fame. Basically, it's like the the Stabilizer Hall of Fame. It's the Vacuum and Sewing Dealer Trade Association. Anyways, that's last year. Kay was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Both Ricky and Kay have been inducted, to be honest. Um, and I'm just so proud of these guys. They're the ones that started RNK Distributing all those years ago. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Kay Brooks is a stabilizer genius. She literally worked with manufacturers in the United States of America to invent the stabilizers that we use today, every day, and take for granted. She's the one who figured out how to make a sticky stabilizer that won't stick up your machine, you guys. She's the scientist. And um, Ricky Brooks and Kay started R&K many, many years ago. Um, anyways, you guys, Kay Brooks... Um, this is Walter Floriani Jr. And the reason I talk about Walter and Kay now is because they're basically captured and contained within our Floriani software. The Floriani software and all the Floriani products were really inspired by Mr. Walter Floriani Jr. You guys, if you don't know, Walter was the fifth first, fifth, fifth generation in his family to do machine embroidery. Um, Walter's probably a, a decade older than I am. I'm the second generation in my family to do machine embroidery. My kids are third generations. Well, Walter was a fifth generation and he shared their family had kept family secrets for years and years. How, the, when we embroider on the Batiste, do this. When we embroider on the linen, do that. You know, as the designer, do this. As the embroiderer, do that. And those secrets were passed on and are contained in our software. And it's called Save to Sew. And it equals embroidery excellence, you guys. It's something that no one else can say they can do. And that is share all of the beautiful Floriani family secrets. And so just notice if I bring up the FTCU software and I bring up my embroidery design, this is the tool I'm talking about right here. It says Save to Sew. And when you click on Save to Sew, the question is, what are you sewing it on? And this is the family secrets that fam that Walter kept, right? When we sew on a baby onesie, we do this. When we sew on a polar fleece, we do that, right? And you scroll through. Now, fleece, now there's a question. 
I digitized and I didn't digitize. Now, if you don't know the answer to that, you probably need to choose I didn't digitize because if you digitize the logo, you'll know that you digitized it, right? But if you digitized it, you choose I did. And then it helps the software to know how strongly it needs to apply, you know, Walt's formulas, basically. And so um, I'll choose I didn't. Now, new style settings. Yes, if you don't want Walter's help and you just want to get to K's part, click next. But if you want to allow the software to edit your design and essentially apply new densities, new underlay styles, compensation for push and pull, any settings that it thinks are necessary, and you can uncheck or check those checkboxes. But when you say next, the software, Walter Floriani himself, literally starts to work on your design. And in the meantime, Kay Brook shows up and says, well, Trevor, if you're gonna sew this design on a polar fleece, here's the Floriani recipe for success. First of all, fuse your item to Dreamweave. Then hoop up some sticky stabilizer, some heat and stay, and stick your item down. And don't forget to top it with a topper. Okay, and so this is the idea of how to do it. In fact, it said Dreamweave Ultra and Heat and Stay is actually what it recommended. I was saying the wrong thing for the, uh, the recipe. These are recipes. And depending on what you select, you get, and depending on the stitch count, you get different recipes. And so actually for the fleece, the recommendation was fuse it with Dreamweave Ultra and then fuse it with Heat and Stay and hoop it. So two layers of stabilizer and then um, top with heat and gone. So these are recipes that you can. And if you're like, what the heck's Dreamweave, Trevor? Click here to watch a video about it or click here to get the product information. You know, and if you're like, that's a great recipe, you click here to print it. But when I click finish and it allows me to save the design now so I can save it in any format, but just know that my design has changed. In fact, if I look up at the top, the number of stitches is 20,244. And if I hit undo, it had originally been just under 18,000. So when I told Walt I was sewing it on fleece, he added stitches. What did he add? Probably underlay. You know, when I zoom in over top of the design like this real close and I turn off 3D, so let me hit undo again. <clears throat> That's what it was originally and then redo. And you can see the evidence of the changing, the adding of the nap, you know, of the of a mesh underlay style, um, a lattice. Um, there'll be other things that were added, like pull compensation. And look in my design notes. Now my design notes have been updated, and all of those sewing instructions were added, so that now if we click on print preview and we do a little printed run sheet for our bunny, um, it'll have the notes in there. And if you want this to all fit on one page and you don't want to do that, this is the large size print analysis. But notice if I go to settings and tell it to print on one page, that it'll fit that into a smaller size color analysis down at the bottom of my sheet over here and basically do me like a one color printing instead of a two color printing anyway. Um, so this is the concept of how it works. You guys, it's save to sew is a tool that you know, after 35 years of digitizing, I don't run everything through save to sew to get Walter. I already have my own opinions about underlays and densities. To me, save to sew is the best tool for somebody who's brand new, just get started, you know, created your first embroidery design and you're ready to stitch it out and you never knew that you needed to choose the kind of underlay. You know, what's underlay anyways, Trevor? Well, when you click on this fill shape, see that there's a properties box and you're in control of all the parameters of how this sews. That's why it's called FTCU, right? Floriani total control, because we give you the control over the embroidery. First of all, you get the default control and you can get Walt's help. But when you're ready to take control, you click on your properties tab for underlay and you see that it has a contour plus a full lattice. And if you're like, well, that's great. But when I do it, I only like to do a single layer of lattice you know, you can make that change. And that's really the way it works. And so it's up to you guys. It's what I call artwork based embroidery. And um, I hope you guys are enjoying today's class. I have not done a lot of answering of questions and it was kind of my intention today. Um, I do have a question and answers class coming up 
just for members of the FTC workshop. And so if you want to, you know, you know, ask a specific question and get sort of like some help with that, I'm setting aside some time for you guys. But in the meantime, um, I really hope you're enjoying the quick start guide. It was like a one hour class get down and dirty and get through some of the most important things. And the next time we come back, we're going to get through things like artwork. What's the difference between a backdrop, you know, a JPEG and a vector artwork. Um, we'll learn about creating embroidery. We'll go through the text tools. We'll do more design editing. And so I hope you enjoyed today's class, you guys. Um, before we're done, I have one more really important topic, and then I'm going to tell you guys my story. So anybody who wants to stick around at the end, I'll tell you guys the Trevor story and who the heck am I and how the heck did I end up the manager of RNK software and how did I learn about embroidery in the first place, you know? Um, the one last topic for today, you guys, and this is it. WAF is king. Let's learn about opening designs, artwork, and understanding design formats. And I kind of talked about this a little bit already, but as you know, there's more than one way to open a design. Yes, you can use your browser and browse through the locations of your computer to find designs and then essentially just click on those designs and drag to add them onto your workspaces and create a layout. Um, when you add the designs from the browser, you're adding these designs to a new empty workspace called Design 4. And when you click on the Open button, you can open a design that already exists. And so, for example, if I go to my desktop and I browse into that very same folder, that EC01 folder, those are Trevor's Embroidery Club designs. You know, and if I click on this Rose design, and then I click on open. So when I open a design, it's not being added to an existing workspace. I'm opening it. It already has a name. It's called, you know, embroidery club number one, blah, 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 roses front, right? That's for the front of a dress shirt, tucks under the collar. Um, so I opened up the design. If I make changes to it, I can just click save. It's already got a name. It's already got a location. Um, notice that it's a PES file. So a P, when I said open, and it's saying oh, all designs, so it can open it all of these different formats. We can open Floriani WAF files. We can open C2S files. We can open PES, SEW, JEF, HUS, on and on and on, all of these different formats. Even now, some of these long arm quilt formats are only here if you own the right program because uh, FTC, you didn't come with QLI, but Total Quilter did. And so does Sketch a Stitch. So remember that I've kind of got a blend here going on. But all the embroidery formats are available for FTC, and so are all the artwork formats. And But the main point here is I can open any number of different formats with our software. So when I click on um, one of these designs, one of the uh, options is called convert to outlines. You see, if I don't check that off and I say open, the software simply opens up the design as it is. And it's not um, that I can't make edits to it because I can. I can st I can color sort it right now. Bingo, you already saw, you know, the one click color sort to F to Floriani polyester thread. So you can edit these designs. I can even select this whole design. So let's just click and drag a box to select. So selecting really comes down. There's more than one way to select, right? You can use the click on all items in your sequence view or click on one color. And we'll learn a lot more about selecting in our upcoming classes as we edit our designs. But you can click and drag a box to select all or part of an embroidery design, right? Whatever's in your box is what gets selected. So if I select all this stuff and I make it bigger or smaller, the software will make it bigger. But when I opened it, I did not tell the software to convert my PES file into objects. And therefore, it won't change the original stitches. And while I can recolor them and I can scale them bigger or smaller, it's still going to have the exact same number of stitches as I originally opened up. So when you open a design, you can open any format, but when you open formatted designs like PES, like JEF, those are stitch-based formats. And, and what you need to understand is 
stitch-based formats, if you just open them up as stitches, the software will never change the stitches. And that's important because you don't always want the software to change the stitches. Sometimes you want those to be the original stitches, the ones that you bought, but you want to add things to it. You want to merge two things together. And so the correct way to open it is to do it as stitches. And notice when I look in my sequence view at each color simply as a summary of the stitches of that color. There's no shapes. There's no, remember I talked to you guys earlier about how it works how the Floriani software is based upon shapes that you can select and fill in with thread. Well, there's no shapes in my in stitches to select. I can't select these stitches and fill them in with thread. That's not how it works. So there's this magic opportunity when you open said design to check off convert to outlines. That tells the software to read the stitches and make shapes from them. So as the software, and right now it's reading and you can see it takes a little bit longer to open the design. And the software is now making shapes. And so it's opened it again. Same design is opened twice. The first time it's opened, the design was just stitches. But this time then it's open. Notice when I click on the color red, there's a whole bunch of pieces, right? It's not stitches, it's there's a run stitch and then a satin path. And that satin path has settings like 0.35 density. So therefore, if you make said satin path larger, it will maintain that same density and generate new stitches. So let's hit undo. So this is the concept that now we can click on all items and just notice that the design's got 23,000 stitches. And when I resize it, a little bit larger, the software starts to go to work and it reads and it regenerates the stitches for all of those satin paths or fill areas and it maintains the density. It doesn't change the run stitches. It For the run stitches, it maintains the stitch length. But at the end of the day, now I've got 32,000 stitches because of that. So when you're opening your designs, if you choose convert to outlines, the software will make shapes based upon your stitches. And you can therefore edit the designs. Now, this is something that we learn a lot about because this is something we often want to do. And there's sort of ins and outs to doing it, you know, because look at all the shapes that it made. And that's very different than, you know, if it was a design that I made originally, you wouldn't see as many shapes because you see what happened was when the software read these shapes, it saw a run stitch. Run stitches go forward, forward, forward. So the underlay was a run stitch into the software. Then it saw a satin path. And then it saw a run stitch. Look, that run stitch is probably traveling over to the next part of the design. Some more run stitch, you know, and eventually another run and another, that's more run stitch and eventually another satin path. And so, you know, every time it sees a new pattern in the in the stitches, it tries to understand them and make shapes. And that's why we can resize them. We can edit them. You can go in, change the density, add underlay, remove underlay, change the type of stitching. There's a lot of things you can do to a design, even if you didn't make it and you just, you know, opened it up. So know, first of all, that that is an option and that you really shouldn't be doing convert to outlines unless you there's a reason. If you don't want the software to change your design, just don't choose the option. And then you can open it, merge two designs together, recolor them, and, and then you'll always be sewing the original stitches and not you know new ones that you made based upon the original ones. So we'll learn more about that later. This is kind of a meaty topic to kind of find it, finish with today because it's really an important topic. What I'm really trying to explain is that a, WA, a Floriani WAF file, my machine does not sew WAF, does it? And yet the slide said, WAF is king. Why is WAF king? First of all, WAF is the Floriani file. When I make an embroidery design, you know, if I digitize something, if I edit this folk art bird, I bring it in, I select this shape, I add density, I resize the design, et cetera, et cetera. When I save it, I'll save it as a WAF right on my desktop. It's the you know, design something, something, waff. That's the Floriani format. 
the WAF is what contains all of your shapes. I'm going to break this down because it's really important to learn. And then we'll call it a day um, for sort of quick start guide number one. But um, so notice right now, it's just taking a minute to sort of process the um, saving of this design. And so I'll just wait for it to catch up basically is what I want to do. But when I say break it down, um, I want to try and create a very simple design. All right, now it's done. Um, I'll click on new. And, you know, we could use the Apple uh, from the custom shapes tool. There's also a basic shapes tool, right? You know, circles, squares, triangles, ellipses, that kind of thing. So let's just draw a shape. There it is. I made that shape. Select it. Click on standard fill. Okay, now it has sort of embroidery in the center. Would you like it to have a hole in it? You could select it and draw the hole yourself if you want by clicking here and clicking on add a hole and now you kind of have to like basically draw the hole and then it'll take the stitches out for you well, what did i do wrong let's try again add a hole oh. draw your hole and then hit enter and then hit right click to finish working on it so basically you can change the stitch direction when you use so all right back up i made a shape and i cut a hole in it right um now i have a shape that has sort of an out outside boundary but really for us it's just one thing right we see it as a shape it's a standard fill i could make it a motif fill I could make it a piece of artwork again. You know, when it's artwork, I could fill it in or not. But if I click on standard fill, it's an embroidery design. And if I click on file and save as, I can call it design five WAF. That's the original. Now my machine does not read a WAF. I can't sew a WAF. I have to say file save as and make, you know, if you own a brother machine, well, then you would choose PES format. And so you make design five PES. And normally I save that onto a USB stick to save to the machine. Now, the important thing to understand here is you finish sewing your design, you save it, you're done, you close it, you sew it out, and now you want to edit it. When you click open, you should go back to your WAF. Don't go back to the PES at this point. Go back to the WAF. When you go back to the WAF, you get what you made. You get the shape that you made with the settings that you set, right? I can select that fill. See, it's still a fill. I can come in here, change the underlay properties. Oh, I wish there was a contour. There, add that on it. You know, maybe no perpendicular. That's too much. Or no, I need more. I want a lattice. You know, and so I could change all those things. No problemo. But if I click on open and I open the PES file, and even if you tell it to convert to outlines, it won't be the same thing. Now, when it opens it up, it's doing what it does, a little bit of magic. It's reading those stitches and it's creating shapes. You know, and based upon the fact that it made those shapes, I can select all these stitches and resize them and it will, you know, generate new stitches. Absolutely. That's how it works. However, and it'll add new stitches. Look, undo 6700, redo 8700. But if you look at the shapes, there's not one thing now. Look, there's a run stitch and then a piece of fill. And then a piece of fill over here, some run, another piece of fill over here, fill down here here so every time it saw a change in the pattern you know because the way this stitches out is it started with a run stitch and then it saw some fill then it saw another run stitch and another fill stitch and another run stitch and another fill stitch and another run and another fill and so it, every time it was a change in the pattern it split that thing up and so yes i can resize this but the point i'm trying to make is I was way better off when I made the original design 
If you save it as a WAF, you always go back to the WAF for editing. Even if you open up stitches and you make edits to them, save it as a WAF so that if you want to go back, you can edit that. Whenever you want to stitch it out, you go file, save as, and you make it whatever machine format you need. You can keep both files if you want. There's nothing wrong with saving the WAF and the embroidery format, but you don't need the embroidery format if you have the WAF. You can always make it a game. But if you don't save the WAF, and I'm just saying it now because it belongs in the first class, you guys, it's a, tough, it's a difficult topic to explain, but it's important because so many people open up designs, make changes to them, and then save them as a stitch file like PES. Don't save a WAF. Forget to or don't know that it's important. And then when they want to edit it, they, they go back to edit, but they don't, they're no longer editing the same thing because they're making a new file based upon those stitches. And so it can go over and over in a circle, you know, opening up the PES, making objects, changing them, saving them again. Just remember, when you make a design, save it as a WAF. You want to collect those Floriani files. WAF is king. The WAF is what contains the edits. The WAF is what contains the shapes. The WAF is what contains the notes that you added, right? The WAF is the one that has all the important stuff. You can always make a stitch file from your WAFs at any time. So me and my computer, I keep the WAFs, and I just save the stitch formats to my USB sticks to stitch them out. But if I want to make a new stitch out or stitch it at a later time, I just go back to the WAF and save it again. You do it how you want to. Okay, so all that said, thank you so very much for gifting me with your time and learning about the Floriani software today. I hope you're excited for the next class. I can tell you that the next date, Quick Start 2.0 Class B is in two weeks from today. It's May the 13th will be our next class. I'm going to post both of these Quick Start classes onto my Facebook or YouTube or whatever so that everybody can share them if you want to share them with your friends and watch them. But of course, all the members of at my workshop will get the download for the class with the printable class notes and all the good stuff that goes with it. Um, all of that said, um, I did say if you stick around after class, I'll share with you guys my story. I'm just going to pop up my questions box and see if I've got any nice comments and questions from you guys today. Vicky was just listening to one of those classes from 2015. I can't read the whole comment, though. This sounds much better. What are you saying? I got a bigger, better microphone? <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Vicky, for your nice comments. Where is the PDF document located, Brenda asked. Now, Brenda, if you're, if you're a member of the FTCU workshop in last class, so when I sent out the download for class number one, download 14, I included a PDF for the whole book because normally you get a PDF in every class. So every single class has a zip file. And when you download that zip file, you have basically the class recording inside of there. You have the class notes in there, the PDF file. And usually there's designs and artwork that go along with that class. And every class is kind of like a little zip. You download it and then you unzip it and then you have a folder for every class. And when you print off all the pages and you put them in a binder, you know where all, how to find everything. Um, anyway, now that we got kind of towards the end of the workshop, what I did was I put all the individual pages together and so the first time I ever shared that was workshop number one class number 14 if you look in the download for that there's a, um, a the booklet that I actually shared the booklet for workshop one two three and fusion so you can print the whole thing if you want to and know everything that there is um, yeah so thank you so very much you guys thank you Penny you're very welcome thanks again Trevor are you design it supposed to stay in the software when we up Update it. Yes, they certainly are. Um, after you get an update, you know, things that you added, like a U-Design, it should still be there. If you're having any troubles with that, Vicky, maybe, Vicky, maybe start a support ticket and we'll investigate for you and see what's going on. Um, but no, when you do an update, things that were added, like your monthly club designs or your U-Design, it's, they'll always still be there. And so they shouldn't ha not have been lost. Um, so if you if you feel that there's something going on, maybe just start a ticket and we'll, we'll follow that up for you, Vicky. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thanks for your questions, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, so like I said, if you want to stick around, I'm going to tell you guys a little story right now. It's basically the 
who the heck am I and how the heck did I learn about the Floriani software? Probably take me about 20 minutes. And essentially what I'm gonna do is share with you guys some photographs. Um, but what I'll do is just say, we give you guys a wave and say thank you so very much to everybody that is gonna log out now. Um, if you wanna learn more, just visit my website, sunsetstitches.com and you can find out all about the FTC workshop. But basically, if you wanna join my workshop, you purchase it from your local Floriani dealer. And when you get your new member DVD, you'll have your redemption code and you can join with me to get all the downloads and all the new classes too. And so um, if, you've download, if you end up purchasing one, two and three, then you'll be, um, I'll send you all the fusion stuff as well. And you'll ha have be collect them all basically. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is um, tell you guys a little bit about kind of who the heck am I and how did I learn about embroidery. And so there's a picture of me learning to digitize. I started, you know, my, my I worked, I was like anybody. I didn't know what I wanted to do graduating high school. My dad gave me a job uh, back in 1984. I was my part-time job. I was still going to school in 84. I graduated in 86 and started working for my mom and my dad full-time in 86. But that's me, 1984, learning to digitize embroidery designs. I love the old uh, aviator sunglasses and my tie-dye shirt. And no, that's not a microwave oven. That's actually the computer monitor that I was sitting in front of. But basically, my embroidery stuff story starts with my dad. Uh, there's my father, George Conkergood. Um, my dad, my family was from Toronto, Canada, and my dad moved us to the wild west of Alberta, Canada, when I was in grade five. And we, um, he took a job managing a garment factory on a First Nations reservation. And that's where my dad learned about embroidery. He attended the Bobbin Show in 1979 and purchased his very first embroidery machine. And that machine came to our family. And so basically that's how I learned. It, it landed on our driveway in a ginormous wooden crate, you know, and my mom and I nicknamed that machine Taz because we were just sure the Tasmanian devil was going to come busting out of that machine at any time. And so there's me and my mom and my dad. My dad started Westcrest Embroidery Company, where the quality goes in before your name goes on. Um, he became, uh, we did contract embroidery and tape punching. So back in those days, like I said earlier, that's what an embroidery design looked like, right? A bunch of holes punched into a paper tape. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the history of it. Um, there's my mom, Wendy, standing in front of a, a big 24 head embroidery machine. Um, I love uh, how young and beautiful my mom looks in this picture. And when I look back on the wall, I see all those paper tapes on back there. Those That's like the design library, you know, for this machine. Uh, mom was making crests that day. Uh, but this is the environment that I learned about embroidery, you guys, in a very industrial commercial. There was nobody doing home embroidery back in the 1980s. Um, but that's where I learned to digitize. There's me in the 1990s. Look how long my hair got. Big old digi board, old fashioned, you know, Windows computers kind of things. Um, my very first software ran on DOS, you guys. I started punching probably five years before Windows 95 came out. Almost 10. Um, anyways, uh, that's my very first dongle. Look at that. Stitch work by Pulse Microsystems back in 1985. That's a dongle. Without that dongle, your, soft, your software would not run. Um, then my next one was a three and a half inch dongle. And then they became USB port dongles and serial port dongles. Nowadays, there's no need for a dongle. If you own the Floriani software, you use the internet to license it, right? Remember I showed you guys the license activator and you get to put it on any two computers, you guys, not just one, but two, you can activate it twice. Yeah, and if you get a new computer, you can even deactivate it, which gives you back your activation so you can put it on a new computer. Um, so anyway, that's a paper tape and some old dongles. Um, but I spent 25 years managing my mom and my dad's design department. It was called Stitchitize, and we created a beautiful collection of stock designs, and that's me and my dad. Nowadays, you find some of the Stitchitize stock designs through R&K Distributing. If, you, you know, if I come down and visit you at a local Floriani store, I'll probably bring some Stitchitize stuff with me, you guys. But that's me and my dad. Um, obviously, we're in New Orleans wearing our Mardi Gras masks, but I'm pretty proud to say I grew up in a family embroidery business. I learned about embroidery from my mom and my dad. 
Um, nowadays, my mom and my dad are sort of partially retired. My dad still sort of maintains stitchitize. And my mom actually helps me maintain my email at my Sunset Stitches. So if you're ever looking for a past class, if you've missed downloading a class and you had to ask for a download, you might get a reply from Wendy Conquer Good. And if you do, just know that's my mom. And so quick shout out to mom. Thanks, mom. Anyway, I got to travel. There's me and my, and my mom, my dad doing a factory tour in Thailand um all kinds of amazing trips to promote our embroidery collection with my mom my dad and so that's how i learned about it you guys i started teaching in the year 2000 um so i've been teaching embroidery for over 20 years now um i didn't come to rnk until probably around the year 2014 that was the year i called ricky brooks up um this is me in 1987 when i was considered the pulse embroidery software expert i moved to toronto canada and i was working for jeffrey mcpherson and company uh when we sold software by pulse microsystems and i was considered the expert because um cool story is you know my father purchased software from pulse microsystems he was one of their very first customers in the entire world and so i had been one of the people who'd been using the pulse software the longest if you're wondering why that all sounds familiar it's because the floriani software is actually made by and our software partner is pulse and so um i've been i like to joke with people and say i've been using the floriani software since 1987 um anyway that's only kind of partially true because of course floriani i came to floriani 2014. this is my walter story i met walter back in 1989 when my dad and i went to a imprinted sportswear show in calgary alberta canada and walter was there with his dad so there was walter senior and walter jr and i made friends i took walter had a class he was the first man I ever met that actually taught embroidery, that wanted to share the knowledge that he'd learned. When all the other people were treating it like secrets, Walter was ready to share the family secrets. And I joined his fun club. And um, so that's me and Walt. And these are my Walt pictures, all the times that I visited and got together with Walt over the years. I never knew I would work with Walter or you know have anything to do with the Floriani software. There was no such thing as Floriani software, you guys. It was just Walter. <laughs> but... Walter met Ricky and Kay Brooks, and this is the day that Walter told me all about. He, I met, I saw Walter at a show, and he was so proud to show me his new software and his stabilizers and his thread. And um, I was just so happy for him. And there's me and Walter. That's the last time I saw Walter. If you don't know, Walter passed away um, in 2020. This is probably back in 2018 or so. Last time I saw him uh, when I was at the RNK offices there. Anyway, you guys, Walter was an amazing person. And I just so glad to say I knew him. And he was a good friend of mine and a mentor. And um, anyway, that's George. That's my dad and Walter. And uh, there's me, Walt, and DJ. DJ was the the first software manager for RNK before I became the software manager. Was DJ, and I and DJ was an awesome guy. And um, so thanks, DJ and Walter, for all your wonderful work. You know, to getting our software where it is now. And it, trust me, it's in good hands because nobody loves the Floriani software more than Trevor Conkergood does. Let me tell you that much. Um, anyway, there I am with Ricky and Kay Brooks. Um, I always knew Ricky and Kay, and never knew I was going to work with them. But it was the year 2014 when um, I was sort of like hearing all these great things about the Floriani software. And I called Ricky up and I was like, hey, Ricky, I'm interested in doing some training for your software. And would you um, like that? And he was so very excited. Absolutely, Trevor, we would love that. And then I said, OK, Ricky, here's the thing. I don't want to travel. <laughs> and um, yet. I know you guys met me when I traveled. So you're wondering what the heck, right? But Ricky is like, okay, Trevor, what do you have in mind? And I said, well, Ricky, you see, um, I love to teach online. I was way ahead of the Zoom curve, you guys. I started teaching on Zoom almost 20 years ago. Anyway, I brought my Zoom classes, my workshops to Floriani in the year 2015. In fact, it was March 2015 when I recorded my very first live class with the Floriani software. And it was a match made in heaven. And I just kept recording with it, recording with it but um eventually what happened was so ricky was like that sounds great trevor you just stay up there in canada and record those classes and we'll sell the workshops to our customers and then when walter became um ill he was supposed to travel and he had been booked to do some events and um 
unfortunately he fell ill and I was asked if I could fill in for Walter. And that is really kind of where it started for me with the traveling because I hadn't originally intended to do the traveling, but I love to travel. And I used to travel a lot before my kids, when my kids were little, I kind of stopped traveling. So I'm proud to say they're pretty big kids now. And as much as I still come home in between trips, I love to visit the sewing stores. And so, um, you know, perhaps when this pandemic's over and they open up the borders, I'll come back down and, and be able to get together with you guys again. In the meantime, I'm just so happy that I've had the opportunity to you know do my workshops. And so Ricky and Kay, just I couldn't thank you guys enough for uh, embracing me, bringing me into the Floriani family, allowing me to teach my work. Workshop number one was wildly successful, you guys. So many people joined it. If you've if you have that disc and you've never registered as a member, please visit my website sunsetstitches.com. Right then embroidered floriani workshop one two and three whatever one you've purchased just register it with me you guys that's how it works um anyway i'm so proud to say that i learned a lot of from ricky and Kay brooks you guys and i really love those people and and this is me and cliff um cliff wallace is the current owner of rnk distributing you guys he bought this company oh i don't know what year long before i came along maybe over 10 years ago now and and cliff works with ricky and Kay and myself and so thank you so very much um you know it was probably um two years ago now when dj retired and ricky um and cliff uh, asked me to come on to RNK as the software manager. And wow, was I blown away because, um, you know, at that point I was traveling and teaching with the software. And so I think I was the logical choice when DJ was kind of moving on to do other things. Everybody wished, you know, the best for DJ, but um, we needed a good software manager to manage our updates and manage the, you know, take care of um, the important things of what's going on with the Floriani software. And so, um, that happened two years ago, guys. And so as much as I still have my workshops, I'm now the software manager for RNK. I love the Floriani software. I work directly with our manufacturers to develop the updates and you know make sure that it keeps working with the latest version of Windows or whatever's going on in the wonderful world of software. And so if you guys have ever had ideas on how you could make our software better, you know, I'd love to hear from you. Um, let me just share with you guys because so thank you so much, Cliff, for supporting me and and, and embracing me. And uh, so I'm Trevor Conkergood, you guys. I'm the software manager for RNK Distributing. And this is my email address. It's tconkergood at rnkdistributing.com. Now, I only want you to email me at rnkdistributing.com if you're contacting me because you have up ideas on how we can make our software even better. If you're looking for a download of your latest class, you should really email Trevor at sunsetstitches.com and help me keep those information straight uh, because you know I just don't do them from the same place at the same time. Uh, but you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's class. I hope you learned and enjoyed learning a little bit more about me and how the heck I learned about embroidery. And, and um, after 35 years of doing embroidery, I still just love learning about it. And I love you guys. I love the people that want to learn about it and the people that want to listen to me talk about it, uh, especially the members of my workshops. So I want to thank so many of the people that are attending today's class. And just I know when I was looking in the chat box earlier, there were a lot of names in there that I recognize. And so thank you so much for some more for really for supporting me for um, so much for all these years, guys, and attending my classes. OK, Lori and Vicky and Bruce and everybody. Thank you so very much, Brendan, Petty and Carolyn. Um, anyway, you guys, uh, if you want to ask any questions after today's class is over, you know how to get in touch with me. Just send me an email. Um, in the meantime, I've got some news. These are my upcoming class dates. So we've got the uh, FTCU workshop uh, quick start part two. So this one's going to be 2A and the next one will be 2B. Uh, that one's in two weeks from now, May the 13th. And then just a quick week later, um, FTCU workshop number one, class number 15 will be on May the 18th. And remember, that's the flower, uh, five flower review class. And so if you want to, um, if you want to uh, do a flower, if you're a member of FTC Workshop and you want to participate, you got to get those designs in. I think I've given you until May the 13th to send me your submissions. I've already received a couple of them already. And so I'm super excited for our next class that well, for, for that particular class. Anyway, I always love the challenge review classes. So yeah, thanks again, you guys, for all your nice questions and comments. Um, I'm just looking through the chat box. If I missed answering anybody's questions today, don't hesitate to send me an email. 
Ah, Nancy's asked a quick question. I'll give you a quick answer, Nancy. Nancy's from Moores down in California. And I know that she's one of the sewing teachers there. And she says that um, she asked about the black dot at the end of the stitching and how do I get rid of it? Sure. Good question, Nancy. For example, right there, see the little black dot at the end of the stitching of the shape that I just made here? Um, what that's about is actually sketch a stitch. If you don't own sketch a stitch, you won't have that little black dot. But if you do own sketch a stitch, um, that's how it got added, Nancy. Anyway, so because I own sketch a stitch, which is a, a Floriani software that gives us this little cool blue widget. And so now that that's the last stitch, see the, so that's the last stitch marker. And when you go into your program preferences, there will be a tab for the preferences for sketchbook. And if you go on there, notice the show last stitch marker. So if you uncheck that, that will take away the black dot that shows where the last current stitch of your design is. And so I like to keep that on because it helps me to sort of zero in on that spot, especially when I'm doing sketch -a stitching. That's a really good reason to use it, um, which is why it kind of was added was part of sketch -a stitch. Um, it just sort of gives you a little highlight to your sort of last stitch of the design. If you don't own sketch -a stitch and you're wondering how you might be able to get that, I'll just quickly show you one quick way to do that. Um, so you won't have the little black dot. However, if you go into slow redraw, you'll be able to quickly kind of move it to the end and see where, see in slow redraw mode, it puts a little black square over it. So as long as you're in the sort of end of your sewing secret simulator, it'll show you that. But then when you click select, that goes away. So, okay, that's a great question, Nancy, and thanks for answering. And thanks to everybody who came, attended live. I hope you enjoyed the class and I especially hope all the people that are new that might catch this one later in its recording. I hope you guys enjoy it um, if you're brand new. Um, in the meantime, um, I'm gonna let you guys go for today. And so what that means is I'm gonna stop recording and when I'm done, I'll post this class onto my social media, share it with everybody. And I'll also zip it up with the class notes and send out a download to all the members. So you guys, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for attending and bye for now.